Well, I'd like to show you how to make a graph today. And I'm going to do that using some data from our Pendulum Lab. The instructions want a graph that shows the length versus time. So that means I need to select the data in columns B and C. And that's going to be the first step of my graph making. It's important when you use data on Google Sheets that only numbers appear in these cells. Normally in science, it's a real big deal to label all of your measurements with units. Um, but notice that these numbers are all um, just the number, no units on it. And that's okay, the units are labeled at the top. So I've selected the two columns and I went ahead and picked up the headings for the columns as well. Now I'm gonna click on Insert and Chart. So Google Sheets calls this a chart, not a graph. Um, its default is to try to make this into a column chart or a bar graph. I'm going to change the chart type. Uh, in science, we always want an X, Y scatter. And so we'll click on that as our chart selection. Now I noticed that Google Sheets did a pretty good job of figuring out my X axis data is going to be the pendulum length. That was the left column that I selected. And my Y axis, or series data as they call it, will be the time. I will point out that doesn't always happen, and I'm not sure why it happened today. Um, sometimes when I make a, a chart using Google Sheets, it'll get these series and, and X axis labels all wrong. And so I'll need to go in and make sure that it's picking the right data for the X axis and for the series or the Y axis. This looks good, so I'm going to move on from here. Uh, remember a couple important things about making a graph. Um, you'll see under this Customize menu, we can add chart and axis titles. And these are crucial when you're graph making. So for this graph, I might make up a title that says uh, how length affects uh, pendulum period. All right, a good descriptive title is crucial when you're doing a graph. There are some options. So if you wanted to center that, for example, or make it bold or change the, the color of that, that's where you would do that. If I select the drop down menu, I can label the horizontal axis title or what we call the X axis. And again, my X axis data was pendulum length. Make sure that you always clearly label both axes, not only with what variable is being measured, but what the units were for that measurement. So I'm going to label this as the pendulum length in meters. And I might pick a little bit bigger font for that so it's easier to read. And then I'm going to do the same for my vertical or Y axis. I'm going to label this period that was measured in seconds. And I might make that the same size font, just so it looks um, continuous here. All right, you can also change. I might make some of the numbers bigger so they're easier to read. You could add um, some other customization to this to make the chart just uh, a, a clear way to represent your graph. Uh, the last thing that might be important in your graph making is to include uh, a best fit line. That function is if you look under the series data or the series menu, you'll notice if you scroll down that there's a trend line option. And uh, right now it looks like the computer is attempting to fit the, the data into a linear pattern. You can select other types. Uh, you'll notice that this line doesn't really go through all the points, which indicates that Either this was not a very good experiment, or possibly that might not be the best function to fit our data. So if I change that to exponential or polynomial, I get a little bit better fit. Logarithm, um, a power series. I'm not even sure what moving average is, uh, but that's not what I'm looking for. All right, I almost feel like the polynomial was the best fit line for that, which tells me it wasn't actually a linear relationship. Okay, you can also customize uh, different colors at this um, menu, so you could change the, the way that your data appears. But again, the, the goal of any graph is that you clearly communicate whatever data you've collected in a picture form. So um, that's how you're going to create a graph. 
Good luck as you make your graphs for this experiment.